Hello dear students, myself Dr. Sachin Gurule, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology, KTHM College, Nasik. So I am dealing with the subject that is Animal Diversity 3rd and in the previous week you have already learned the chapter number 1 that is Introduction to the Phylum Chordata and in this lecture we are going to start with the chapter number 2nd that is introduction to the group protochordata and today we will discuss the topic that is silent features of the protochordata. So let's see. So what are the chordates? Obviously the all these are the animals which are shown here into the, this slide or in this picture all they are referred as the chordates. Then one can say what exactly the chordate means. The chordata is one of the deuterostome phylum which includes the heterogeneous group of animal that differs from one another in many respects. Now most important characteristic that is the what exactly the deuterostome. Now in case of deuterostome whatever first opening is there the first opening into the embryonic development is a blastopore. When this blastopore it becomes an anus. Such animals are referred as the deuterostome. While in case of the protostome, in case of protostome, that blastopore is developed as a mouth. So, in case of chordata, whatever blastopore is there, that blastopore is going to develop into the anus or it becomes an anus when the development takes place. So, this chordate, all chordates are the deuterostome which includes the heterogeneous group. Heterogeneous in the sense you can see the much diversification in their shape, size, habit and habitat of the animals belongs to this phylum. Hence is referred as the heterogeneous group. The prime character of chordate obviously is the presence of notochord. So the animal that has notochord is referred as the chordates. Now the notochord is also known as a corda dorsalis and it is a solid unjointed rod like structure located in a mid dorsal line between the dorsal nerve cord and the gut region. Gut in the sense whatever elementary canal is there that is referred as a gut. The notochord consists mainly of large vacuolated cells that multiply to form a thin epithelium at the periphery. And it gives support to the body and provides the space for muscle attachment. That is known as the notochord or that is the function of notochord. So in some lower chordate, this notochord is persistent throughout the life. But in most of the higher chordates, it is partly or completely replaced by the vertebrate column. And hence they are referred as the vertebrate organisms. Okay. So this is just the introduction to the what exactly mean by the chordates. Now we are going to deal with the introduction to the group protochordata. As you have already learned now, these chordates are large heterogeneous group of animals that differ from one another in many respects. And in the broad sense, this phylum chordata is divided into the two groups. The first group is referred as a crania, is also referred as a protochordata and second group is referred as craniata or it is also referred as u chordata. u chordate means they are referred as true chordates and the protochordata means these are the primitive chordates. So this phylum chordata is broadly categorized into two groups initially, a crania referred as protochordata and second one craniata is also referred as the u chordata. Among these animals belongs to the group a crania, they are referred as the lower chordates. Lower chordates because they are showing the some primitive characters of that of the chordates. Hence are referred as lower chordates while the animals belongs to the craniata are referred as the higher chordate. So this animal taxa belongs to the phylum chordata are referred as the higher chordates. While 
this part of this diagram or the chart is representing the lower coordinates and all lower coordinates are belongs to the group ocraniata okay so this is just a systematic representation of the synopsis of classification of phylum chordata and in this chapter we are only going to deal with this group that is ocrania and further that ocrania is subdivisible into the three different sub phylum that is hemichordata urochordata and cephalochordata so in this chapter we are only going to deal with these three sub phylums okay so before start with the sub phylum let us see what exactly mean by ocrania or the protochordata okay the ocrania that word is a greek word o means absent and cranion means head it refers to the absence of head so those chordate organism in which head is absent is referred as ocrania this ocrania is also referred as a protochordata and that protochordata that word is also coming from the greek origin it is further divisible into the protos obviously protos means the first and chordae means the chord refers to the first or primitive chordates so according to the character they are showing all these characters are belongs to the chordate but they are primitive hence they are referred as the protochordate showing a primitive characters hence are referred as the primitive chordates okay the examples of this group ocrania or the protochordata uh, belongs to the different sub phylum obviously the balanoglossus rhabdopleura hadmania salpa doliolum branchiostoma and ocimetron so these are the few examples of the primitive chordates which are comes under the group that is ocrania or the protochordata so let's see the silent feature of that group ocrania so called as the protochordata now first of all the group ocrania or the protochordata includes the small sized primitive lower chordate animals so the most importantly these are small sized animals and why primitive lower chordate as they are showing the primitive characteristics as compared with the higher chordates okay then second character all the animals belongs to the ocrania or protochordata are exclusively marine animals exclusively marine animal in the sense they are only and only found into the seas and oceans means they are not found into the fresh water bodies or on the terrestrial mode of life so they are exclusively marine only belongs to the seas and the oceans then next character there is no appendages means whatever appendages the other chordates they are having like a legs or whatever limbs which are present all these appendages are absent then there is no cephalization there is no exoskeleton now usually the higher chordates are provided with a particular kind of the exoskeleton but in this group no there is such a exoskeleton is there and cephalization is also absent cephalization in the sense the organization of head there is no well organization of the head region that is referred as cephalization so there is no appendages there is no cephalization and there is no exoskeleton in the animals belongs to this group the next character the head or skull or cranium are completely absent as there is no cephalization means there is no head head is not distinct then notochord is persistent and jaws and vertebral column are also absent so these are few characteristic then another characteristic is coelom or the body cavity is enterocelic now what exactly the enterocelic 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 means the mesoderm is formed in developing embryo wherein coelom originates from the pouch growing and separating from the archenteron 
archenteron is nothing but a digestive tract so here in this diagram you can see so this is the early stages so this is a blastopore and this is the development of the uh, digestive tract okay and which is going to form the cavity which is known as the archenteron now whatever cells belongs to that region is referred as a endoderm that is the middle uh, region or the middle germ layer from which few of the cells belongs to that mesoderms are get separated in the form of pouch so here you can see in this diagram the few cells are get separated from that gut region or from archenteron and they forms a pouch then after that pouch is going to develop around the gut and is going to give rise to the formation of the body cavity so called as a coelom if a such a kind of the condition is there in the animals development then such a animals are referred as the enteropolic coelom okay so if the coelom is developed like this way is referred as enteropolic coelom then next character the pharynx is provided with a permanent gill slits okay endostyle is always present this pharyngeal organ coats itself with the mucus using the cilia and this endostyle is assist in filter feeding mechanism of the protocordates now as they are marine organism they are living into the marine water and they has a filter feeding mode of the food feeding mechanism and for that purpose this endostyle is very important as this endostyle is assist in the filter feeding mechanism in case of the protocordates so endostyle is always there in case of the ocrania or so called as the protocordates so <clears throat> next character about heart heart if it is present it is without chamber means there is no chambers into the heart if you see contrary on the higher chordate organism the heart is usually provided with a definite chambers broadly categorized as the auricular chamber and ventricular chamber but such a chambers are completely absent in case of heart of that ocrania or so called as the protocordate the blood also without red blood corpuscle I mean there is no rbcs in the blood of the ocrania or the protocordate the next character is kidneys are protonephric now protonephric kidney is the most basic form of the kidney of the chordates now if you see in case of the kidney development of the kidney of chordate the development of kidney proceeds through a series of successive phases and each phase is marked by the development of more advanced kidney and the these kidneys are referred as archinephros then pronephros or it is also referred as a protonephros then mesonephros and finally it achieve the stage known as the metanephros condition but in case of this ocrania the kidneys are protonephric protonephric is the most immature form of kidney among the chordates while the metanephros is the most developed form of the kidney the metanephros persists as a definite adult kidney usually in case of higher organism but here in case of the ocrania or so called as a protocordata the kidneys are belongs to the pronephros type so here in this diagram you can see the distinction between the pronephros mesonephros and metanephros condition so in case of metanephros the posterior part is going to develop into the true kidneys which became a functional when they are became a uh, or it uh, get a birth okay and if the proximal portion is going to form the excretory part that is referred as protonephros and is a basic kidney of the chordate the pronephros develops in a cervical region of the embryo and in this region epithelial cells are arranged themselves in a series of tubules and the tubules are called as nephrotomes and join laterally with that of the pronephric duct so these are the pronephric ducts to which these are get joined and such a kind of the kidney are referred as the protonephric kidney which is the most basic form of the kidney among the chordates then next character is sexes are 
may be separate or may be united means they may shows a process so called as hermaphroditism the reproduction is asexual as well as the sexual then gonoducts are usually absent among these organisms so sexes are separate means male and female individuals are separate and sometimes or in some cases the testes and ovaries which are the reproductive parts of male and female respectively they are present in a single animal in these cases we can say the sexes are united and for that purpose there is a separate concept that is hermaphrodite in case of hermaphrodite animals both male as well as female reproductive organ present in a single individual and hence they are can able to reproduce by asexual means simply by budding or by means of sexual means by forming a gametes the male forms the sperm female forms the egg and after the fertilization the embryo is developed when gametes are involved in a reproduction that is referred as sexual reproduction while if there is no involvement of the gamete during the process of reproduction can be referred as asexual reproduction okay then the next character the development is indirect through a free swimming larval stages now what exactly the indirect development in the indirect development whatever young ones are hatch out from the eggs or after the egg the individual are not at all resembling that of the adult but they are having some other stages or they looks like a other animal such a development is referred as the indirect development and the indirect development is also occurs into the acrania or the protocordata where you can able to see the free swimming larval stages and this larval stages goes under the process of growth and they are goes under the process so called as a metamorphosis and after completing metamorphosis and completing development they achieve the stage of the adults and then their definite characteristic uh, characteristic features are becomes visible so this kind of the development is referred as the indirect development now if you see the examples of the acrania or the protocordata the examples are balanoglossus that is referred as the uh, tuberculous worm then rhabdoneura so this is a rhabdoneura then hadmania salpa branchiostoma so this is a branchiostoma and asymmetron so all these are the examples belongs to the acrania or so also called as the protocordata so here with we have learned the silent features of the group acrania or the protocordata so thank you thank you very much